God bless you. So today we're going to go into Matthew chapter 19 and we're going to go to verse 18. Oh, hang on, sorry. Verse 17 I'm going to start with. On Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. So, if you'd like to get ready. And he said to me, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, God. But if you desire to enter into life, Keep the commandments. So do you see how he says, if you desire to enter into life. For we are dead in our sins. If you desire to enter into life, keep the commandments. Follow what Jesus teaches. Matthew chapter 5 to 7. He breaks down the commandments in greater detail. And of course, I know I have many videos going into that. Read this regularly if you do struggle with it please read it gain deeper insight pray for guidance and understanding so that you can discern what it's saying so that you can be convicted in your heart and follow through with it and he goes through the commandments with the man and he goes I followed these since my youth but what do I still lack now this I find quite interesting, so not only, it's not just doing as you're told, it's about what's in your heart, because listen to this bit, now Jesus said to him, if you desire to be perfect, go sell your property and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me, but having heard the word being grieved, the young man went away for he had many possessions so the man had a lot of things okay so this is a man that loved what he had man of wealth now all of us we have lots of things let me put it this way you've gone out for the day and you come home your house has been broken into and your TV is gone and say you have consoles, so your consoles are gone. All your lush entertainment based things are gone. How do you feel? Honestly answer, how do you feel? What you're feeling in your heart, what you're thinking there, is what you want to think about and talk to God about that feeling, whatever that may be for you. For me, I had a lot of things. I really did. I I used to collect computers. I owned every machine since 1981. Finding God, I had no use for them. Everything is gone. I mean, it would be a waste of my time to keep them. For the Bible is the true treasure. For Jesus gave us a parable about the man who found the treasure on the land. And then he went and sold all his things... So we could buy that land for that treasure. The Bible is that treasure. Finding God is that treasure. For if we now look at Mark 8.36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Nothing on this world has any value. Everything on this world will eventually decay and be destroyed. Lot's wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt don't lament material value don't be attached to what you, you have don't think how much profit can I make don't be afraid to give to the poor don't be afraid to help others don't be desireful of what other people have one thing I've noticed in this day and age is we have a lot of technology and even though let's say mobile phones the phone you have works next week the company's gone and made a brand new one but your one works but everyone wants that brand new one but your one works why do you need it you don't 
don't be covetous for these things. Don't be so desirable for the next thing. We keep going here, 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 but we're never satisfied. The Bible is true nourishment. Nothing else on this world will ever satisfy like the Bible. Jesus said, if you are thirsty, come to me and I'll give you living water. He will nourish you. Go to him for what you need. Everything in this world is just decaying. It's not going to last. And there's no good in it. Let go of television. Let go of computers. Let go of all the things in society. Forget the celebrities. Forget the fashion trends. Forget all the things that make you focus on the world and make you forget about God. Focus on God and everything you need will be given you. Trust in the Lord in all things. He will find your peace. And he will help you. Don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look back. Don't lament. Don't miss it. Jesus is going to be coming. And when he comes, we need to be the upright, faithful servant. Working as we should be for his day to come. For there are some other verses I wanted to go through. And I'm going to look at 1 Corinthians 10.21. I think this is very important. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. We can't be focusing on the world when we're trying to take the knowledge of God into us. The world keeps attacking it. The flesh versus the spirit. They are in opposition against each other. Focus on the spirit and the indwelling of God within. The Holy Spirit will guide and help. And there will be struggles and there will be difficulties. But we have Jesus to intercede for us. We don't willingly sin, but we do accidentally sin. We don't intentionally decide, why well, I want to do something that would anger God. And if that is something you feel, you need to really talk to God about this and get some guidance. We should be focusing on what would please our Father, for we are children. Remember, as Jesus was on the cross, Abba. Abba above is watching all of us. Focus on your Father above. We are as little children. Psalm 23, the good shepherd. Now if you know much about lambs, the sheep are some of the most useless creatures on the planet. One thing I'd learned from a preacher who was first a farmer, uh, David Pawson was his name, and he explained when he was a farmer that he learned just how useless sheep were. He said that they won't go to water, they won't go to food, you need to take them to the food that they'll eat. You have to take them to the water so they'll drink. When you take them to green pasture land, you'd have to turn them on their back and tie their legs so they couldn't run around because they would exhaust themselves and die of exhaustion. So when it says, and he lays me in Psalm 23, I think of that. We are so useless without God. We really do need him. And that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Because can you imagine what it's like without it? I know I lived without knowing God a very long time. And I know how many mistakes and how much misery I knew back then. To the man I am today. And I could never go back to it. It's why I can't bring myself to watch television. can't bring myself... To listen to modern music because I know all the stuff within it. I can't bring myself to play all these computer games. I can't bring myself to play all these violent board games. Anything that's not fitting in the eyes of the Lord, I want no part of. For peace, I grant to you. If I remain in you and you in me, ask whatever you wish. Ask to build a stronger relationship with God to understand him. For his love to be upon you and your love to him. Praise the Lord regularly. If you don't know how, just ask and pray. Maybe you want to sing to God, but you're scared you don't have a great singing voice. I'm tone deaf, I'm pretty sure. 
But if it's in your heart, praise the Lord on your journey. Maybe you like to play music and learn to play an instrument. Praise the Lord. It can be done in many ways. Or maybe you're an artist. Everything we do, we do in the glory of God. We live in peace and in love for the Lord. We stand as an upright lamp for others with that peace upon us. Others will see it. We can call others to us. So we are as the branch in John 15 to bear more fruit. We have to help as many as we can. Time is running out. We can only spread the word. It's up to others if they take it. My skill is not in evangelizing. I've learned that. But I can understand the Bible so well and I know how to explain it well. We all have different duties, roles and jobs in the body of Christ. So let's all work together to strengthen that and find that path. Ask God, what what is my skill? What do you want me to do? What can I do? further your glory for it is not us that there is the Holy Spirit that works through us for his glory now we know we can't have anything to do with bad things and we know if we go to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them so if you know something is a bad thing you can't turn a blind eye. If you know someone is not wholesome and they are of the enemy and they worship the enemy, you know you can't have anything to do with it and you know you share it with others. That's why I don't do all the things I used to do. Well, you can find so much information online about these things and see it for yourself and once you know it you can't unknow it and the bible warns us many will die through lack of knowledge don't unwittingly feed the enemy don't unwittingly put money into the enemy's pocket so he can make more things in opposition instead starve him from you so that the enemy has no grant nor purchase upon you walk with the lord For if we go to Ephesians 4.27 and give no opportunity to the devil. Make sense? Let's constantly focus on the things that are pleasing to God and not pleasing to ourselves. And we deny ourselves the things we know that are sinful. We don't willingly sin. Don't let desire create corruption. Instead, ask to be the clay that is remoulded and pleasing to the Lord. Build that faith, build that trust, build that relationship. Work towards attaining that peace that Jesus grants. I in you and you and me, ask whatever you wish. Trust when you pray. Don't pray and hope, that's not what praying is. That means you're double-minded, single mind. Believe and trust. Jesus is no lie, he's as honest as they come. Think about it. If you knock, the door will be answered. If you ask, you will receive. Make sense? Ask, receive. Knock, it will be opened. Ask. That's where it begins. He will help those that are struggling, those that are lacking. He will give the strength where they need. Ask. If you are afraid of something, ask for the strength to overcome it. If you are worried about something, ask for help to endure it, to get through it. If there is an issue in anything, just ask. Like a child to a father, to a parent. As a parent, you would give whatever your children need, wouldn't you? Exactly the same with the Lord. So trust and he will give you what you need. So ask. 
take heart and trust in the Lord. He is there for all of us. So we must be sober minded and watchful for our enemy is always keeping an eye on us. So if I go to First Peter chapter 5 verse 8, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Don't be that someone. Stay on the upright path. Okay? So we have to make sure he can't gain purchase upon us, nor a foothold on us. If we keep working through, we won't be deceived. If we trust in the Lord, not in the works of man. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Trust in it. It will give you cohesion. And you will be helped. You will find peace. Put your trust in God. Do not be deceived. For there are those in today's time that are calling good evil and evil good. The world is becoming so deceptive and so cruel and cold hearted. And if we have a difference of opinion to that, we are ostracized for it. There is no discussion anymore there is have my view and if you don't you're wrong that just seems to be all it is now hearts are growing cold all life is sacred for in jeremiah when god says and i formed you as clay in your mother's womb as a baby a child being formed in the womb all life is precious the blood of the innocents Think about that. Hold fast to the good things. Turn from all things that are evil. Have no part of them. Study and learn. Seek knowledge. And it will be there for you. Stay strong. Do not be disheartened. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Turn from evil and don't give in to it. Pray and rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Pray for cleansing. Pray for endurance. Pray if there be any evil upon you, be removed you in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That you may be able to see clearly, be washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. Focus on your relationship with God and He will help you. God bless every one of you. I hope this helps you. Stay strong in your journey, in your walk with God. Take care.